let me get this straight. It seems the policing of language doesn't stretch as far as calling for jihad, which has several meanings, but since the late 20th century, the word has gained a very negative reputation, often being used by terrorist movements to legitimise their cause and motivate their followers. Examples of this would be the Afghan Mujahideen, the Taliban and the Northern Alliance. They waged a jihad in Afghanistan against foreign forces and each other. There was Algeria's armed Islamic group who waged a jihad of terror against the government there. Remember Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda and the waging of a global jihad against Muslim governments and the West and, of course, Hezbollah, Hamas and Islamic Jihad Palestine have also characterised war with Israel as a jihad. The policing of language also doesn't appear to stretch as far as chanting from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, which according to the American Jewish Committee, is a common call to arms for pro-Palestinian activists. It calls for the establishment of a state of Palestine from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea, erasing the state of Israel and its people. It's also a rallying cry for terrorist groups and their sympathisers from the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine to Hamas, which called for Israel's destruction in its original governing charter in 1988 and was responsible uh, for the terror attack on Israel, Israeli civilians on the 7th of October, which was the single deadliest day for Jews since the Holocaust. So you'd think that when protesters chant from the river to the sea and call for jihad in support of the people of Palestine, who, let's face it, are run by Hamas, who are a de facto governing body and a prescribed terrorist organisation, the latter the BBC has thus far uh, refused to directly call them, you'd think that this would be a red flag. Why on earth are people allowed to call for jihad in the streets of the UK? It's very important to me and the Home Secretary that people who spread hate or support prescribed terrorist organizations like Hamas have no place in this country. A visa is a special privilege. It's not an entitlement. And if you uh, commit uh, comments that uh, create hate or spread anti-Semitism, then you forfeit that privilege and you should have that visa revoked and you should be expelled from the UK. Well, that was Robert Jenrick. My words have power as Suella Breverman was reminded when she rightly called the invasion of the southern coast in this country just that. I mean, she's right, by the way. Yet, ironically, in this country, we have a civil service that spends a fortune on policing of language and diversity and inclusion. You know, the other day we heard Labour would make misgendering a hate crime, even though their leader took two years to confirm what a woman is. We have a police force in which some were not long ago wearing rainbow laces, driving rainbow cars and taking the knee. Yet chanting from the river to the sea and calling for jihad seems to be okay, according to them. The same police that showed up in force when someone tweeted something bad and created hurty feelings. Earlier on GB News, the former head of the Palestinian diplomatic mission to the UK, Manuel Hassan, told us that he still believes in a two-state solution. Don't try to put us, you know, all in a frame that we are terrorists as Palestinians. There is a difference between the Palestinian people who want peace and security, and there is a difference between the Palestinian Authority, which is the legitimate representative of the Palestinian people, who believe in a two-state solution, who have condemned violence all along. The question is, can Israel stop state terrorism on equal basis? That's, that's the question. Now, I get that we have freedom of speech in this country, but in my view, I draw the line when you're calling for what many interpret as death to innocent people. I want to see peace and forgiveness from both sides. No life is above another's, so I'm equally sad for the death of innocent Palestinians. But whilst you are free to speak in this country, words have consequences, and it's time to stop conflating freedom of speech with the freedom of consequences for those words.